I'm Eric Russell. I am out and about today here at Richmond Triangle Players Robert Moss Theater with Ari Gold for his soundtrack to Freedom Gold Nation concert. Yes. Such a long intro title. <laughs> we got it all in there. So yeah. welcome back to Richmond. Thank you. I love Richmond, Virginia. And I just found out that, um, you know, Richmond is this, I mean, I knew some of it, but I didn't really, didn't dawn on me that, uh, that all of the major battles of uh, this country, the fight for freedom, and the fight for independence, all happened here. So I'm super excited because, you know, there's imagery in this new album that has, you know, that that is sort of um, American, but but I, the colors are gold. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a gold nation instead of an American nation because it's sort of imagining uh, a different kind of. Uh, nation certainly than the one we're seeing today. So yeah, because ask you about the title of the show was Gold Nation soundtrack to freedom. I was just really okay. What did all of that mean for this whole album? Right. This whole, this whole tour. This whole show. Right. Well, Gold Nation uh, is sort of you know this more collective uh, thing than uh, than my experience of being a solo artist. I mm -hmm. wanted to create something that was a little bit more of a community and collective. So all the amazing performers that I have, like Mila Jam, we're having tomorrow night, and um, and you know Delicia Glam, and I've had Javier Ninja from the House of Ninja, and and so all these people come together, and it's like the, it's one Gold Nation. And even even the fans, even the audience members, uh, are part of this Gold Nation and this experience. To at least within the course of that one hour, feel like they're part of this uh, world in which uh, you know we all belong. Um, and, uh, and then as far as soundtrack to freedom, um, that basically is this idea that, uh, like soul music is to the civil rights movement and folk music is to the feminist movement, dance music has really been the soundtrack to LGBTQ freedom, uh, to the fight for, you know, gay rights and, uh, you know, visibility and, um, and it's it's the soundtrack for our struggle. Um, you don't have to like dance music to be gay or LGBTQ, but uh, if you really think about the genre, it is that defining soundtrack. And the album is a tribute to that. Tell, you know, dance music. It's interesting because both dance music and LGBTQ people have often historically, in you know, pop popular imaginations, um, been considered frivolous, not important, uh, they don't matter. You know, there's nothing frivolous about dance music and there's so much inspirational things, m lyrics and messages that are in dance music that are just as deep and soulful and spiritual and important as any other genre. You can think of so many nights or sometimes you have a song comes on or an anthem and you're like, this is my, this is the one that gets me going, this yeah, is the song absolutely. that just, and you hear it and people go, well it's just, dance music it's just EDM right. it's like oh that's the game music like no this is like stuff that just resounds and of course and resonates with of us. course now you know uh, in the straight world in the mainstream world uh, they are doing dance music and these ED, EDM parties right. that are a direct inspiration from what once again you know LGBTQ people have have started and and, and it sprung from from us, uh, from our creativity and from our inspiration, and not just the music, but the spaces, the, the dance floor, the clubs. Um, there's been so many. You know, I've been lucky to be a part of some of that back in the '90s in New York, mm -hmm. um, but certainly you go back to the '80s and the '70s, uh, Studio Fifty Four. You know, all these places that uh, all kinds of people were were allowed to be on the dance floor, and actually, you know. The more freaky, the more creative you were, um, the more celebrated you were, and it didn't have to do with looking a certain way or looking, you know, or certain standard, certain popular standards of beauty, or you know, it really Everybody had was to do with accepted. That was just there they yeah. are, and everyone's just being. And what amazing. are you bringing? What what is your what what kind of attitude and, and and style are you bringing? But you can do that in any in any body type, in any race, ethnicity, any sexuality, any gender. So yeah, it's cool. I was I always <laughs> loved when I was going to New York and going to an event and I would see all these just amazing outfits going, 
I am underdressed. <laughs> well, I, your I, hair is turning it. <laughs> the, so the I hair, love the rainbow hair. This is brand new. I did this last year because I had to. I wanted to go cover the March for Equality in D.C. And I was like, how am I going to you know, get the shots that I want? How am I going to do this? Right. And I went, Rainbow Dash is my spirit animal. And so I went, Joshua, I need you to put this on my head. It's so good. The colors are so vibrant. And so this is just, I love it. So we, we were creating some rainbow moments for the show also. True. And Delicia Glam has created some rainbow sequin Ooh. fabulousness. I was really curious about some of the great songs that you have coming out for the show, like uh, Make Music, Sex Like a Porn Star, Turn Up the Night, Drop Dead Gorgeous, Back in High School. Um, which one, you know, from these, which was like your absolute favorite? What's the history behind some of these? Well, I, that is that is the question of like asking which is which is your favorite child when you've had, had children. Um, so it's everyone tough. has one. It's tough. Um, I you know I, I have different feelings about all of them. Um, uh, Turn out the night. The creation of that is very special to me because it wasn't. It was the last song written for the album, and it happened sort of by accident, and I bumped into a friend of mine on the plane going to Holland, which is where I recorded most of the album, um, and bumped into Maria Christensen, who wrote uh, uh, um, Waiting for Tonight for J-Lo. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm going to Holland too, and I'm going to write music. And I'm like, oh my god, we should write yeah. something. And so that was that came out of that moment. Okay. And it was one of those beautiful things. Um, and, uh, you know, make music, uh, it's like part of my anthem because the album also came out of uh, a somewhat of a dark period for me and you know struggling with my health and all kinds of things and I was still able to make the album and make music and it's it, you know you hear artists say this uh, but it has been so true for me um, that music has really saved my life. Uh, and continues to save my life. And then, of course, back in high school with the amazing Adam Joseph, and the, we're, um, it's going to be a video that I'm very excited about. Awesome. It's a long time in the making, but uh, and um, and we have some remixes that just came out that Adam did and Jared Jones did, and um, and yeah. So, and, and, you know, the last time we spoke, I, I had to shout out Jared Jones. So right. I'm just going to shout it we out. Like Jared Jones, we love Jared Jones. We love Jared Jones. Jones. And would we even be here right now? We would not be here without Jared Jones. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Jared made everything possible. So, yes, we love Jared. They went to Jared. That's right. <laughs> this is your second time back in Richmond because you were here for Pride a couple of years ago. My second time performing in Richmond. Yes. But I'm telling you, Richmond, Virginia has become like, you know, my, sec my second home. I've been coming out here a lot. I, 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 I was. Uh, That's where you came from. Um, Thanksgiving. Um, I have so many different points from my life of reference here, but um, uh, but yeah, I, I was a guest sort of lecturer, guest professor, I guess you could say, uh, at VCU, which I think is like the first or one of the first uh, all black African American uh, un universities um, in the country. Virginia State or VCU? VCU. Uh, no, then it's Virginia State. Virginia I always State. get mixed up in the two. two, two. Uh, yeah, and um, we had workshops about hate speech mm -hmm. that uh, you know uh, that were exciting, and um, and I got to give a lecture about my own work as an openly gay artist, and and so yeah, I love I love Richmond, Virginia. You did a couple of things that I just I love that you spoke at BCU. I got a kick out of your magazine story vid that you posted. <laughs> I was like, okay, but I thought that was like. Really a great thing because we've all been that person going through the racks. Yes, like I'm just gonna pick up. Yes, this. that was the just... that was my porn because we didn't have the internet and uh, you know um, going to the magazine stores and looking at photographs, um, you know, Bruce Weber and all that stuff. That was that was the only way that I and it was in between that moment between school and home because mm -hmm. I commuted on the subway every day to school and so that was the moment. Um, Except that one scene in the Terminator, mm -hmm. I used to watch that one scene in Terminator One. There was a sex scene that was really hot, and I used to watch that all the time. <laughs> and um, you know, I watched that video. I put the video on and saw that the video was all warbly. I told the story before. Comes to find out, I come to find out <laughs> that uh, comes and comes, comes to find out <laughs> that uh, both my brothers 
independently of each other, we're all watching that scene Same. over <laughs> and over and over again. And so the VHS tape, that's where, how we're going back, was all like <laughs> in the sexy moment. I know it's kind of crazy. I don't know why this tape doesn't play so well through here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, so let's talk about Jen. Jen! Jen! Outrageous. It's gem amazing. Because <laughs> we're going to talk to someone who's jam amazing in a second. Yes, we are. Because we're so excited. Come but in. but jam. Okay, come come on during come on, come on during jam jam amazing. It's the jam jam. Oh my god! Did you realize? I just realized this at this moment. Mila jam. Everybody, welcome Mila jam. Please. Hello, Mila jam. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm here. Do, do you real, do you realize that the jam episode that I was on when I when when this uh, twelve year old Orthodox Jewish gay boy from the Bronx was playing an eight year old Vietnamese orphan girl. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was an episode called the the J the Gem Jam. Okay. Oh, All yeah. right. Yes, the Gem Jam. <laughs> there was the perfect that segue. Was so, <laughs> it was foreshadowing. <laughs> Our hair almost matches. Yes. So are you doing Richmond? I am. It's a little uh, sprinkly and it's a little cleansing. Um, it's actually <laughs> been a very healing experience. Mm -hmm. Sharing some time here with my dad. Yes. And with Ari's family. I know. It's Mishbacha. And We've been doing family mishbacha. time in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> it's it's shared. Uh, it's everything. Which is so cool, I think, because, you know, so many of us LGBTQ people um, have experienced not being accepted by our families, which both, which we have experienced, we've exactly. gone through, yeah. and okay. we've forced our our families, like many LGBTQ people have to, some people have to leave, and, and, and they can't never come back, and they don't feel safe to come back mm -hmm. to their homes, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, some of us are lucky enough to be able to get our families to rebuild to relationships yeah that's what it's about i think it's really important to be able to rebuild yeah. the broken relationships that you have with people in your life specifically family um maybe some friends but that's what happens when people find out things about you that they didn't know or don't know how to accept yes because they they did not they didn't were not equipped or educated or prepared right to have children you know like us we did not fit uh, the fantasy. Notices, yeah, of, yeah. Of I was what? just talking to my mother about this because she was like, "How's your dad? How are things going with that?" I mean, I was like, "He's wonderful," and we're so connected now. I mean, after many years of not being connected, and now many years of being connected, and um, you know, it's just always assessing. It's something that I was just thinking it doesn't ever, it never really goes away. It's always looking at it through a different lens, even when you grow mm -hmm. and there's goodness mm -hmm. and there's a relationship that's been rebuilt. It always, there's always, it's always there. And that's something that I've just recently had a little aha Oprah moment myself. Um, because, uh, and I knew this back then and somehow forgot it, that, that coming out, you know, like I, like I, when I came out, I, I had the sort of prototypical major in the closet, mm -hmm. out of the closet. But the truth is, is that even after that huge transition between in the closet and out of the closet and telling my family and sitting them down, reading to them my 18 page coming out letter and all of that, <laughs> oh that it never, that the coming out doesn't end. And, it doesn't. and it's and an the, ongoing process. Yes. You're always coming out to people. Yeah. yeah. But, and, but it's not only well, it's that always, you're coming you're out letting people in and, and coming out to yourself and finding out and on and taking off the layers of, of identity for yourself because you know, there's a tendency, I think human nature is to, want to land like oh now i'm gay i know now i know who i am and the truth is that we're still always figuring this who out i think that being gay or being trans is is this is an ex it's a it's like a micro example of that for that all of humanity really has to go through we all have mm -hmm. to have to constantly take off the layers and find out who we are and allow ourselves to evolve and to morph and to yes. change i was saying earlier like um I was very fortunate in my experience that my family's been loving and accepting, and which is very unusual. Which is really unusual. Yeah. Or at least cases. it was back um, when you were, because it's like yeah. the '80s and '90s, and it was just one of those things. Um, but recently, last Christmas, I got the annual phone call from Dad. He was like, "Hey, old buddy, like, hey, Dad, got the got the check, got the whole thing. What's going on?" Well, you know, when I was your age as a Marine out in San Francisco, you had to be very careful when you met your guy friends going to the bar. And all of a sudden, my head like, wait, <laughs> where's this going? Start that story again, please. And went through the whole thing. And my dad came out at 80 as gay. All these years. Wow. wow. But 80. He's telling me all these stories oh my about my like, God. It took him, you know, apparently everyone in this family had to die. And, wow. you know, whatever. Yeah, that he finally happens. came out. So I was like, yeah, you talk about the layers. I was like, well, okay. Yeah. Damn. 
and 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 respect all due respect to your dad that's something that i did not want to do i wanted to be able to experience my life embracing mm -hmm. my full potential and my authenticity and i want to see the best that life has to offer in the skin that i'm in and being okay exactly. with that and i understand that that's not available to people even today even even in living in a time where we feel like we should be way past all of these barriers it's like there are still people who, who are living in Canada. no they're still there like be open about it but i think also we don't even realize sometimes um you know in, in how much uh this is a this is a a, a fancy word in a way, but you know, and how much what you have done, Mila, for example, and, and living your life and, and even doing doing it as an artist publicly uh, is very, it's, it's trailblazing, it's pioneering, and, and, and it has created, you know, space for the younger, you know, they're coming out now as non-binary and GNC at, 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 at oh, so we just heard, what, five years old, somebody, six years old, they're mm -hmm. talking about these things. Yeah. So there is, there are spaces now. It's yeah. not all over the country, and it's certainly not all over the world. But there are so, at least some spaces that have now been created for, for uh, you know, the young, the youngins, the new youngins. Because we're seeing that. We're seeing. I know with one local organization, they now uh, side by side now has um, services and counseling and support groups for like middle school kids, and we're seeing like we're seeing some of those young performers like at DragCon. And you're seeing like kids coming out at like yeah. drag queen story times, yeah. you know. It's, it's made, and we're seeing kids books now. Yes. There's a great one that came out, that came out called "A Prince and His Knight." Mm, right. Oh, I and did see that. Such yeah. a great story. Yeah, the right. story I've been sharing is about the guy in high school who asked his straight best friend to be his prom date, and he said yes. Yep. And he, they had like a little uh, festive, you know. Um, reveal about it's doing cute. this, it's so cool. Yeah, and of course RuPaul's Drag Race has been a huge influence on the culture and the mainstream streaming of that and the popularity of that has brought LGBTQ issues into people's homes. Mm. In it definitely that, has brought conversation. Yeah. No one can't get it anywhere has. without conversation. Good yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think we have to have the conversation, absolutely. It's a, just Look at this gorgeous picture of I me. Know. I know. I did not know where that was going. <laughs> so All intriguing. Right. I'm just so intrigued. Because she is known as the Beyonce There's a, there's a gorgeous picture. Right? <laughs> the, your local Beyonce. Local Beyonce. <laughs> Hi, this is your local Beyonce, Mila Jam. Uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing today? Everybody doing? So, in case people don't know, uh, let's give them a little background. Because we were chitty chatting earlier about some of the stuff. And, like, you had been in Rent. Mm -hmm. and, but you're really known now for doing more activism. You did a campaign for the effect show pose yes so about that, i'm an artist artivist i like to call it love it activism and art together artivist um and center around pop music pop culture um, i'm a singer songwriter i'm a theater girl at heart i grew up in the theater world i do a lot of stuff on and off broadway um shout out to broadway bears and um amidst all of that i do like i'm an actress as well and i do some print model stuff here and there you know just the jack of all trades in a sense, but I was um, the ad campaign model for Pose on FX. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's so important. Um, I love the show. I'm so glad to be a part of it. But I got to be one of the big billboards to represent the show. And um, I did, I did the show Rent. That was um, a few years ago. I toured with the show, it changed my life. And I got to play many different characters in the show, which was really awesome for me. And, um, I've been writing music for uh, about 10 years, um, working on putting my own music out for about 10 years. And I was with a, a record label that was dance and house music. Um, I'm independent now, and I'm just doing my thing and talking about living the dream and talking about what it means for someone like me. Um, and I think my activism, if you want to call it that, is I just believe in being being myself, being true to myself, being open, being honest, asking questions, um, and sharing the things that I've learned along the way. And um, standing up with my sisters like Laverne Cox, and Peppermint, and Trace Lissette, um, yes, and MJ Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Uh, that's really what it is. I think we just want to live our lives visibly so that we can show the people that are out there that are, um, you know, living the 
the same things that we live through, there, there's something to live for. There's like a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm living for your manicure right now. And <laughs> there's a light at the end of your manicure. Right. <clears throat> and don't mind this ring because I am not engaged. <laughs> and you're engaged. You want to your call art. me? My number is five 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 <laughs> six one one eight hundred for, go, for a good time. What? <laughs> Jam amazing. So we hear some of your songs in the concert on Saturday night? Yes, you're going to hear some of my new music. I just released an album. It's an EP, but I like to call it an album because it's a body of work. Um, it's called Bruised. It's dedicated to the trans women of color and women all over the world who have dealt with uh, toxic relationships, abuse, that have been murdered, that have been um, marginalized and ostracized. And um, I'm going to be sh doing that, and I'm going to do um, one of my songs called Better Days, which was my summer jam. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know about it, look it up on Spotify and iTunes, Better Days, get it, by uh, producer DJ Caillou, uh, who's in Germany. And the song is on the radio in Germany. Woo! Yeah. Awesome. I'm German. <laughs> Sometimes. <Sure. laughs> I'm going to pull it quick because I think it's very timely for where we are in our conversation. You, on October 6th, posted a great quote that says, Today I'm thinking about how my own experience of gender within oppressive patriarchy allows me to be an ally to the trans community. I was like, I think it's so timely considering everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it, it boggles my mind and, and so many things and gets me angry. But I was like, it's my conversation. Yeah, yeah I think... Um, I think it's more important than ever that, uh, you know, we all have our, all, you know, all the letters of the LGBTQ have, we each have our own issues specific to us. And then it breaks down from there, you know, whether, uh, whether you are, you know, an, an, an older uh, gay man uh, or, or, you know, or a young uh, trans person or, you know, I mean, there's so many different categories and ways that it breaks down. but. And I think all of our issues, all of the things that we all go through, the specificity of it is important and needs to be discussed. I also think, though, that we always have to discuss it in the, I think, in the spirit of unity, mm -hmm. because I think the enemy right now is so clear, you know, that, that there's a, there, there, we know, like, there is an enemy that does not want us to exist, mm -hmm. that wants to erase us, that, uh, that wants to take away our rights, that wants to take away our health care, that wants to, you know, um, not, yeah, I mean, you know, there is a, a, a clear-cut enemy, um, and, uh, and they are in the highest positions of power mm -hmm. in our country, and, and, and around the world it's happening. And so I think that, you know, like you said the, about conversation, you know, how can we have conversation? Social media makes conversation sometimes so easy for us to be, to, shut people down or to attack, uh, you know, how do we have conversation that's less about that with, from within ourselves mm -hmm. um, and, and that, you know, conversation that allows us to understand our experiences, what all of our needs are, you know, and, yeah, and, and we do sometimes have to prioritize certain things, you know, because there are trans people being, still being murdered, you know, at, at, yes. at, at ridiculous rates. Yes. And so, you know, that may be a more, a more uh, immediate type of issue than some of the other more nuanced issues, um, you know. Yeah. But yeah, because social, <laughs> social media yeah. can be a great platform. But we get we post something and someone's it's like, it's a double edged sword. Yeah, it they, really is. It I mean, is. You know, you can. We we have to. I think we have to listen to each other. I think that's one big thing we need to learn how to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. um, let each other in. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to learn from our brothers and our sisters especially when we don't really understand what their experience is like and we have these uh, preconceived notions. So, I mean, it's like, I'm really learning to be open about that. I know a lot of things, but I'm just learning that I don't need to know everything and I can have room to be taught new things from people that are in my community. So it's like other people outside of the LGBTQ community sometimes think we all know the answers for everyone in our community and we don't. But we're trying to like sort of come together and figure that out and what it means for us as we explain it to other people who are outside of the community. But we're all learning. I think we're all learning and we need to sort of be careful. We need to be kind with ourselves to know that 
I love, you know, especially gay men who stand up and say, I don't really understand this about trans women or I don't understand this about trans issues. But Mila, can you help me understand? Can you give me information about what you experience? I always say, like, I'm open to talk. If it's the right time in the right place, yes. If we're dancing on the club floor and we're getting down and we're listening to Destiny's Child, I like that's not the great time. But then there's a time, you know, and a space for like everything for us to have a talk about it and a conversation. And we build and we create. Which is really nice about, you know, because we were talking about that earlier, about having lunch with some of the faculty uh, at the university mm -hmm. here. Um, and like learning about, you know, from a history professor and a history Ooh, perspective. Yes, that was so good. Learning about how so much of this stuff goes back. Uh, and, and I think not to cut you yeah. off, but the history is so important. And the her That's story. The, the her story. <laughs> it's also the history too. Yes. History and her story. Yes. All of it. And though. their story. I, I wasn't someone. It's our story. It's our, our, our story. story. <laughs> Love Weastery. Thank you. <laughs> Ustery. <laughs> Ustery. <laughs> I just, I was someone that didn't grow up in school loving history. I loved the arts. I'm an art, you know, theater major. And that's, that's what really resonates with me. But I'm finding the joy in learning about history, about the community, about myself, about my ancestry, about my, my parents and my family, my, yeah. my bloodline and all that stuff. And, and theater is history. I mean, if you look at the, the shows yes. that we all love, they're about history. They're about moments. They're about uh, place and this time. This is history. Hello. <laughs> We're gonna have history on our stage with Gold Nation on Saturday. <laughs> it's yeah. really exciting. Because it's, it's it's but because it's it's a story. Yeah. We're telling a story, story. Yeah. and 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 I love that the story is here in Richmond, Virginia. We're, We're glad to be here. We are. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So this has been fun. If folks want to find out more about Ari. I mean, like, can they follow you on social media? Do we have I don't know what social media is, and I'm not on any Mila's of this. Mila's turning so out. So good luck in finding me. She just got verified. <laughs> you got verified? Like I said, I don't know anything okay. about social media. <laughs> <laughs> no, please keep up with me. You know, I don't like to necessarily say follow, but keep up with me at the Mila Jam. I'm the only one. Um, that is my Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I, my website is themilajam.com, or some people say the, themilajam.com. And um, my music is on iTunes, Spotify. Please support um, what I would appreciate nothing more than you just sharing it with friends and playing it at your parties and talking about it. Um, purchasing it is great, um, but I, sharing it is really what it's all about. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Share it. I, I'm arigold.com. I've had it since the 90s, even before I owned a computer. Well, you're from the 90s? 90s? Oh my god. Oh my god. You know, I'm a relic. Oh, so far. <laughs> from another time. Oh, wait. So long. Um, and my social media is at Sir Ari Gold because I was knighted by the Imperial Court. Which is celebrated 50 years. Wow, 50 years. That's amazing. And they're one of the, if not the longest standing human rights organizations in the country. Um, I kneeled in front of a drag queen and became a, a, a sir. sir. There you go. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, and um, and and I like that you say don't follow, just share and yeah, come along. Yeah, don't follow us, keep up with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, to follow us, keep up with us, you know, tune in to find out more about Out and About and where I'll be, be next. But we're going to thank you guys for being here today at Richmond Triangle Players Robert B. Moss Theater, where Saturday night you will come see Gold Nation soundtrack to freedom with these two amazing people. My bear hug. Oh, Yay. oh, it's warm. This is cozy. Right. It's chilly outside. That's right. <laughs> I'm Eric Russell. I've been out about with Mia Jam and Ari Gold. You don't know where I'll turn up next, but tune in to find out next time. See ya. <laughs>